Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and we're here for day number three in the bracket stage of MSI. 2023. Incredibly excited to go over this. This was the first round series that I was most looking forward to. Not because I truly believe that one of these two teams is definitely like the best team in the world or one of them is definitely going to win the tournament, but rather I believe that of all the Eastern teams, the, the one that's in this series is probably the most beatable of all of them, at least in their current form. And I do think that the best Western team is going up against them. And so I'm really excited to get into this one. Of course, if you want to know my thoughts on the tournament as a whole, not only up until this point, every single game that's been played, but even the pre-coverage, everything that I saw in summer, you can check out my primer video linked up in the iCard right now. You can also check out my bracket predictions. That's also going to be linked up in the iCard as well as that whole MSI playlist. You can check all of that out. If you want more further, you know, detailed breakdowns of everything that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. But today, we've only got one series to cover, and I want to know what you guys thought was going to happen in this series down in the comment section below. Did it live up to your expectations? Did the result end up being what you were, you know, looking for and expecting to happen? I always love to gauge you guys' temperature on a lot of these games down in the comment section below, so let me know, of course. But with all that being said, it's time to jump right into it. Of course, if you're new to the channel, what we do here is go game by game, talking about the advantages and the disadvantages that both teams were able to generate across all three, and then eventually giving my player of the game, my dead of the game, and my player of the series at the end, talking about how I think things might be moving in the future, and then wrapping things up. So without further ado, let's kick it right off. Today, we have a matchup between the number one seed from the LCS in Cloud9 and the number two seed from the LPL in Billy Billy Gaming. Now, the reason I call this the most interesting round one matchup, when you look at a lot of the other matchups, at least on paper, or at least a lot of the other big seeds, Gen G, T1, JD Gaming, they feel relatively untouchable by Western teams. It just does not feel like there is going to be any team outside of the top two leagues that's going to be able to compete with them. They play on a little bit of a different level than everybody. And for BLG, I was relatively saying that going into the tournament. I very much said in my primer that I had a top four, a very clear top four, in my opinion, for the teams at this tournament, and BLG was in that. Granted, they were at the bottom of that list, and I definitely stand by that. I still think they're the weakest of the four, but they should be better. The problem is they didn't exactly look the most dominant in the play-ins, and it was a little bit concerning. Now, maybe they were just testing things out. Maybe they knew they would be able to win no matter what, and, you know, obviously they didn't lose a single series, so it's not like they got dominated or anything, but dropping a game to Golden Guardians isn't exactly the most convincing way to send yourself into the main stage. And so for a team like Cloud9 that I do think has really good talent, albeit incredibly inconsistent talent, players like Blabber, players like Berserker, I've been hyping up, you know, at a global level, I think relatively often, even a player like Fudge, I think is pretty underrated in the grand scheme of things. They've got the talent to be able to make this an interesting series. Now, if you watch my bracket prediction, you'll know I still picked BLG in this. It's not like I'm going all crazy and saying that C9 is going to be able to win it, but I only picked BLG 3-2. I do think that this should be a relatively close series, that C9, quite frankly, should be able to keep up and keep pace with BLG so long as they don't fall victim to their own underperformances that, quite frankly, can happen with some of the players on this team. And so, yes, I'm favoring BLG, but I'm really hoping for something close. Did we get that or did we not? We're going to have to find out going game by game and, of course, going game by game. We're starting with game number one. And game number one was a BLG win. Billy Billy is able to take the first game of the series, a pretty big one. We always talk about it on the channel. Momentum, especially in League of Legends, is so massive. Getting that confidence behind you, knowing that you can beat your opponent, that is a huge first step, and especially for a team like BLG, that also, you know, in their own right, can be relatively inconsistent. We kind of saw that in the plans with players like Elk being incredibly talented, but sometimes being just a little bit too over-aggressive. You know, getting that confidence under their belt can, you know, kind of propel them to make a lot of the plays that got them here in the first place and that's what they did in game number one is they quite frankly played a style that was really really dominant and you know what I really want to shout out and what I really want to be impressed with is it wasn't exactly how they were winning in the LPL. If you go back to the LPL, this is a BLG team that very much won through the early game. They were able to generate massive leads, and as long as they didn't throw them away in the late game, they were able to close out. But this was a little bit of a comeback win. Not that it was like a dangerous C9 lead in the early game, but it's good to see BLG being able to adapt and being able to, quite frankly, just team fight better than a good team fighting team in Cloud9. So let's go ahead and talk about what ended up happening this game. C9, like I said, did actually get a pretty good early game lead. A lot of really proactive plays 
from this team, and I really like to see that. There was a one-for-one -one trade in the bot lane. First Blood does go to the side of BLG, but it's really not a bad trade at all for Cloud9. You're going to kind of chalk that up to being relatively okay for both sides, but Cloud9 actually find a really nice fight right after they lose first trade. BLG do a good job getting to the area first, having good objective control, but as soon as it's over, Cloud9 find a fantastic fight. Berserker getting a lot of gold in that fight, and that's going to be incredibly crucial towards the mid game here because now they can really start to take over bot lane and that's huge if you can get that Lucian Nami behind it's a really good spot on gets dove into the bot lane really good stuff for C9 and so they come out of the early game actually looking stronger in my opinion they're in a really good spot not exactly the best scaling team in the entire world but certainly not a comp that should get like completely trounced in the late game if you've got a lead especially in the mid game like you should be able to stay proactive and continue to make plays now this is where things start to fall off the rails a bit for C9. BLG get Herald and they use it top and they get a lot. They get first turret and they get it to charge on second turret. They do get caught out for it. Jun and Yigao staying a little bit too long, giving over two more kills to C9. Looks like a good trade, but the map pressure that BLG gets from it is actually super influential towards the rest of this mid game. And then really the play that completely changes the tide of the game. Uh, Zven getting caught mid lane, just being way too far forward. It certainly wasn't the last time that was going to happen in this game on the Rakan, and C9 try to trade back, and at, at first it honestly looks okay, and they're able to get Eminus out, it looks like, you know, a you know, say private Eminus mission that goes successfully, but Bin will not be denied, he goes all in, like way, way too deep, you would think, on this Gnar, but somehow he sets everything up perfectly, he's able to survive, the rest of the team follows up, and BLG with a massive win in the mid lane, this is basically a 4 for 0 on the side of BLG, which is a disaster for Cloud9, and that entire early game lead is now just gone. Certainly not the only time that Bin would be a problem in the mid game. Uh, C9 try to catch BLG out, but Bin's counter engage is disastrous. And so just multiple really good plays coming out from the NAR being able to not only disengage, but be this big beefy frontliner that can, you know, really manage his bar incredibly well. This was a great showing from Bin. And then, you know, we get to the late game. C9 try to play some of these team fights well, especially Berserker. I mean, that fight around Dragon was essentially perfect from Berserker. He very narrowly makes this a, you know, four for five in favor of C9, but he's just not quite able to get it done. He ends up going down. The gold deficit's a problem. BLG are able to just kind of continue to pressure. C9 continue to get destroyed. Fudge's teleport into the top lane is disastrous. He immediately dies. BLG get Baron. They ace C9. They end the game. Pretty, you know, structured ending here, but really good game from BLG. You just have to give them a lot of credit, mostly because this isn't the kind of style that they were really good at in the LPL. And so for them to be able to come out and beat what I consider to, at the very least, be a competent team in Cloud9, I think is a really good showing in the mid to late game. Ben is obviously player of the game. The dude was unreal on the NAR. Obviously, it's one of his biggest picks for a reason. You know, I'm not going to try and say that, you know, it's unbeatable because I certainly don't believe that it's unbeatable. We saw that in play-ins, but, you know, for him to be able to come out and, and quite frankly, top diff fudge as much as he did, it's a really encouraging sign for BLG fans. They were really, really good in this game. And then I want to give a lot of credit to June and Yagao and Elk as well, and even On, uh, who did still have some misplays this game. But for the most part, this was a team effort from BLG. This wasn't one player kind of carrying them across the finish line. Nobody was hyper-fed. It was everybody keeping up, and, and BLG playing really nice in the late game, especially in those team fights. But for Cloud9 on the other side, pretty miserable start to the tournament for them, if I'm being entirely honest. A couple of players played really well. Berserker had a hell of a game, man. He was super good on the Zaya. Not only was he able to generate an early lead into the Lucianami matchup, which is crucial for this bot lane, but even in the team fights in the late game where Cloud9's down gold, he is winning these fights almost single-handedly keeping Cloud9 in the game. If he had a team around him, this would have been a lot better. I also think Blabber played really well in this game on the Nocturne. I think some people are going to be critical of some of the engages, but for the most part, he was able to disrupt that backline incredibly frequently. I think those were the two players that you're really looking at playing well. Everybody else, not so much. I think Emma was not super harmful. It just wasn't incredibly positive for the team. But Fudge and Sven had bad games. Fudge is going to get my dead of the game because the top diff was really bad. And honestly, that TP is just, it just sealed it for me. It's one of the worst decisions that we've seen at an international tournament. And, you know, I'm not going to try to overreact, but, you know, Fudge domestically and Fudge internationally is certainly something to be concerned about. Um, and then Sven in the bot lane just didn't have a great game. Sometimes it's going to happen on Rakan where you go a little bit too deep, you get blown up immediately. But a lot of times he was just getting picked off trying to get vision. This is the problem with teams that are behind and, you know, maybe can get away with this kind of stuff in a lower region that doesn't necessarily punish it in the same way. It very much felt like a situation like that. But overall for Cloud9, I definitely still think they have the talent to bounce back, especially because it seems like Blabber and Berserker at the very least are playing well. If they can get everybody else on the team to at least play competently, they could still win a game for sure. They were in this one and they actually had a really good early game. And 
So positives to take away. But for BLG, exactly what you wanted to start the series. You didn't panic when you lost the early game lead. You still came back and had some really good mid and late game team fights. That's what I want to see. But are they going to be able to carry that into game two? Or is Cloud9 going to be able to even up the series? Well, the winner of game number two was... Billy, Billy Gaming, they are able to take game number two. They're able to go up into the series two to nothing, and I just have to be impressed with BLG. There really is nothing else I can say here. This was another game where Cloud9 honestly looked like they got a lot of what they were looking for in the, you know, the early to mid game, I should say. They draft this comp that wants to be able to try and get to that point where they can just group and fight. They've got a lot of tools to be able to disengage BLG in particular, and I think that that was really what they were going for, and clearly with the game plan and a lot of the plays that they were making, they wanted to try and get bot lane super far ahead. They wanted to get Berserker online. They wanted to get Blabber online. They're two best players in game one. They're two best players across the entire year. They wanted to get those two into a good spot. Unfortunately, just wasn't enough. BLG showing so many good things. I honestly just want to say... Who is this BLG and what did you do with the one that I know? Because this is a different team. This is a team that is winning not through splash plays. This is a team that is not really winning just through outskilling their opponent. They're taking it slow. They're making good macro decisions and they're having really good objective control. This is huge for BLG and I'm really, really excited for what this means for the rest of the tournament. But what ended up happening in game number two to get us here a wild early game first and foremost. Cloud9, I think, comes out of this looking like a little bit okay. You know, they are down in gold, but they're making a lot of really proactive plays. Now, On and Elk do get first blood, playing it basically perfectly. On in particular plays this fight incredibly well on the Nami to be able to pick it up as the junglers are just kind of hovering, keeping themselves at bay. And, you know, it's pretty good for them. But Eminus starts to make his way bot lane, and that's going to be a trend. I mean, the dude was down like 100 CS at points in this game because he was abandoning his lane to help Blabber. And more specifically, he was abandoning his lane to help bot lane, to dive, to try and punish this Lucian Nami to try to get them even really at all onto the back foot and quite frankly in the early game it was kind of working there really wasn't a lot that Lucian Nami could do to counteract that at least so long as they were continuing to try to make the plays obviously there were some things that Elkanon did that were just simply better Blabber trying to get bot but Elkanon just winning the 2v3 straight up and just absolutely obliterating the Kindred because Sven missed everything in the engage. And then, you know, Elkanon moving mid and, you know, Elk dying when On leaves for a millisecond because that's what Elk does. It's just kind of part of the game. But, you know, C9 continuing to stay aggressive, diving bin bot, getting four man. C9 continue to make these splash plays. They continue to make a lot of these aggressive picks, sending a lot of resources to try and generate kills. The problem is that it really gives the, the other team, in this case BLG, a lot of options for what they want to do on the map. You're basically giving over entire map control to the other team because you're investing so much into these small pockets across the map. And I think BLG took a lot of really good advantage of that. Not only were they able to stack a lot of objectives, but generally speaking, they were able to generate, you know, strong gold leads almost solely off the back of their farm, almost solely off the back of the fact that they weren't, you know, rushing to get kills and sacrificing a lot of waves to do so. And so, you know, BLG looking good, but C9 certainly not out of the water when it comes to the late game. The big problem, obviously, that everyone's going to point to is C9 just choosing to 50-50 the Baron. It is completely unacceptable. There's just no reason to do it. I understand that you're, you know, theoretically behind at that point, and it feels like a last-ditch effort kind of move, but really, I mean, you have ways to be able to keep the Vi out of the pit. I mean, just send Galio to taunt here. Like, I mean, or just have Fudge or Rakan or anyone just, you know, shadowing, just trying to make sure that it's not a 100% 50-50. Well, the problem is it turns into a 100% 50-50 that June wins. He's able to get into the pit. He's able to smite the Baron, and that's disastrous. C9 just have to walk away with their tails tucked. It looks like they found a catch on to on, and they do. They are able to kill him. His only death of the game in the mid lane, but he was so far forward, and BLG had so much confidence at this point that they just completely destroy the fight against C9. Uh, later in the game, Eminence tries to engage, but ends up missing and doesn't end up getting it even with the ghost and c9 dies before blabber can ever press that r button and it's disastrous they're able to end the game blg look good like i don't want to make this about c9 like this really is about blg looking honestly like a completely different team than what we saw out of them not only in plans but in the lpl as well remember this is a momentum this is a very streaky team that really relies on player skill and, and i don't want to say that there wasn't any player skill diffs in this game elk and on in particular were sensational they were dumped dumped away by BLG in the early game. I mean, the amount of pressure that C9 put into that bot lane with basically no 
retort from BLG was actually insane. For Elkanon to be able to walk out of that arguably up in gold is absolutely ludicrous. And it, it quite frankly, is only because they are the better players. On's going to get my player of the game here. His Nami was sensational. The bubbles... The ultimates, the, sh the healing, the shielding, the positioning, knowing exactly where he needed to be, the early game aggression, the late game like aggression, everything was working for me for Nami in this game. It was a really good game from On. Everybody knows I like On as a player, and that was definitely here. Elk did make some mistakes, was a little bit more error prone, I would say, in this game, but his flash plays were better than anybody else. I mean, them being able to just straight up win a 2v3 in the bot lane is absolutely ludicrous at like eight minutes into the game, and so big props to them. Bin had a gigantic ultimate uh, where c9 you know that fight where they caught out on the cannon ultimate hits like four people and absolutely shreds them it basically wins the fight by itself ben continues to play well june had the baron steal yagao is the best score line but you know it's syndra you're kind of gonna get that with that champ every once in a while but overall the the macro slow willing to get to that late game version of blg is just not what i expected to see at this tournament but i'm honestly very pleasantly surprised that we're getting it as for c9 on the other side now you're in deep shit, right? Like, so I don't I don't curse a lot on this channel, but I think it's appropriate in this situation. You're down 0-2. You really, you, you've kind of thrown away both games, if we're being entirely honest. You had positions to win. You just have not been clinical enough to be able to capitalize on it. And that was going to be the worry with teams like this going into the tournament. We know that Blabber and Berserker are talented. And quite frankly, that has shined through in this series. Now, Blabber's made some mistakes, but Berserker looks like a god, even when he's not necessarily in a great position. He's an incredibly talented player. The problem is that C9 will make it least least one major error per game and you just can't do that against the best teams in the world like BLG is and it continues to be a problem. I know Eminus was down 100 CS. I'm not going to blame this game on him. He made a lot of impactful plays in the bot lane and actually like his roams even if it was a little bit too extreme. I'm not going to blame Blabber. Yes, he, you know, could have pressed ultimate a couple of times and just didn't press the R key, but at the end of the day, like if you're Kindred and you get blown up, you're Kindred and you get blown up. It happens. My dead of the game is going to go to Sven in the support position. I know he's getting better at Rakan, and it showed in this game. He's not the Rakan that he was when he first roll swapped to support, but at the end of the day, you still have to call him out for just not being very good at this champion, and for them to play it two games in a row, I think is really detrimental. He had two bad games of Rakan, missing Ws, you know, ulting and immediately dying, just multiple circumstances of not properly reading what his role is in a team fight, and... I, I just, I'm worried about it, right? Like, the, Sven is someone who I've been a little bit more hesitant to call, you know, an elite support at the LCS level. I, I still think he's really good, right? Like, I'm not trying to shit on the guy, but he's getting a little bit exposed here at MSI right now. You could say the same thing for Fudge, who just made bad decisions across this entire game. I get you can get away with some of them on Scion, but his mechanics are good. His decision making is bad, and Again, that really does seem to be the theme with Cloud9 for now. But now that we move into game number three, I mean, it's a must win. You either get swept or you keep this series alive. That really is the case for C9. But for BLG, you're hoping and praying that you can get this done in three. If you can knock out the number one seed from North America in three games after losing to the number two seed from North America in plans, that's certainly going to be a little bit of a progression upgrade. And that's going to give you all kinds of confidence. So are they going to be able to do it? Or is C9 going to keep the dream alive? Well... The winner of game number three was Billy Billy Gaming. They are able to take game number three. They're able to close this out in a pretty clean sweep pretty quickly. And the gap is widened, my friends. There is no doubt about that now. What with Korea destroying Europe in the beginning part of this round one. And NA's best chance getting absolutely destroyed in the series against maybe the worst Eastern team at this tournament. It's not looking good for us, boys. It's just not. But congratulations to BLG. I mean, this team really did look amazing in this series. This is, in my opinion, the best series that they have played at MSI up until this point. They were more dominant in this one, in my opinion, than they were against R7. And all games weren't, like, ridiculous blowouts. This game was also not a ridiculous blowout. In fact, a couple of players on C9 played really well in this game. It was unfortunately just the whole package that wasn't going to be enough to push them over the top. But when it comes to BLG in particular, that team, Billy Billy Gaming, and the players on it doing the right thing and making the best decisions, this is the series that has by far impressed me the most out of them at this tournament. And that's a really good thing to say now that we are in the bracket stage. If they can keep this up, they're going to be a team that's going to be a little bit more threatening than maybe I was giving them credit for in my bracket prediction. But how did we end up getting there? What happened in game number three to close out this series? Well, let's go ahead and talk about it. BLG looked pretty okay 
in the early game, but... I will say, C9 do emphatically win a fight in Bot River, and it's a really good fight. Blabber plays it pretty tremendously. He's able to get a lot done uh, right before, basically, the Drake spawns, and he's able to deal a lot of damage. He's able to be super aggro, and let me tell you, that's going to be a theme throughout a lot of this game, is Blabber playing incredibly well on this Lee Sim. This is maybe his best game of the year, and that's certainly saying something, because Blabber's had some phenomenal games, but he was making play after play, in this one, and that definitely started in the early game, as it tends to do, with the champion like Lee Sin. Of course, that wasn't First Blood. First Blood was top lane, which went to Bin. Congratulations to him. He did get ganked by Blabber, but was able to kill Fudge fast enough to be able to make it a one-for-one, one, and he grabbed the First Blood. So that's good for BLG, but C9 definitely getting, you know, a lot more out of the three for zero in the bot lane. Unfortunately, right after that, it's just more not good stuff from C9. Sven goes way too deep. Uh, trying to, I don't know, do something. He has no idea that on on the Alistair is going to be there. I think he's looking for a 2v2. It ends up being a 3v1, and Sven gets absolutely deleted. He's not had a particularly good series, but luckily for C9, that was probably his only major mishap of the game, which I think was better than the first two, in my opinion. But honestly, if I had to talk about a player that defined the mid game, it's Blabber. Like, I know he's on the losing team, but every single major play in the mid game was through this Lee Sin, and whether good or bad for C9, a beautiful kick onto Elk in the bot lane to be able to pick up a kill, and then he gets another kill top lane, basically from just outplaying Bin in this particular circumstance. He's just playing at a super high level in game number three, and I feel really bad that he's on, you know, the wrong side of it, unfortunately. I think if you want to give BLG credit for something, yes, Blabber is getting a lot of these flash plays, just like C9 had been getting throughout most of this series, but BLG throughout the entirety of it did a fantastic job at maintaining pressure elsewhere on the map, not being beholden to whatever major play is happening. That's something I think C9 got away with a lot in the LCS, and just generally teams in the LCS get away with that a lot, is they're going to go for plays, and, you know, other teams aren't going to be as aggressive and trying to cross map, and BLG is not one of those teams. They are absolutely going to try and take advantage of anything that you really leave them on the map. So if you overextend, if you overinvest into a certain area, they're going to be able to punish that. And I thought they did a really good job of that in the mid game. Unfortunately for C9, the wheels really start to fall off at that third dragon fight. They're up two drakes to nothing at that point in the game, and they really want to try to accelerate towards this soul point. Uh, you know, it's Hextech soul, or not Hextech, it's a uh, chem soul, which is really good for this team and just really good in general. It's the best soul in the game. And so they really want to, they, they see it as a win condition. They really want to try and prioritize it. So they fight here at third dragon. Not only do they lose it, Yagao picks it up, but they get absolutely demolished in the fight. And all of this time, Rift Herald had been dropped mid lane by June and was or, uh, originally by June, and, and was being pushed by Bin, and just took not only mid-tier 1, but also mid-tier 2, which is disastrous for Cloud9. That one individual fight and that one individual play put them in a really bad spot that, you know, we'll talk about it. They did a pretty good job trying to get themselves out of, but it's, again, it's another theme of this series so far that Cloud9 does a lot of things right, but then they make one major mistake, like one actually awful decision, and, and they put themselves at such a deficit that they're really just not able to dig themselves out of. Now, credit to Cloud9, they actually did keep things relatively interesting. BLG does get Baron. They do a much better job at zoning out the enemy jungler, but they're not able to do anything with it, because immediately after, Cloud9 goes super aggro, Blabber plays the fight really well, and they're able to ace them. Cloud9's able to ace BLG. Baron is off the map. It is gone. It is not going to be a problem. The, the issue with that is you have to do something about it, right? Like, BLG still was able to get the gold from slaying Baron, and they were already in a pretty big lead, and so that ace had to translate into some level of pressure somewhere else on the map. They were able to pick up another dragon, but they had to sacrifice Blabber to do so, and then you get these fights in the mid lane where right before second Baron, Blabber feels like he has to go in, but... He goes in onto the Ari, trying to get that kickback, trying to get that reset, but she has stopwatch, and so he just gets blown up. That's jungler gone right before second Baron. Not a lot you can do there. You know, top laner's getting caught. Fudge got caught out immediately after they caught out Bin. I guess just because he didn't want to be left out. I don't know. I don't know what his idea was for that play, and then eventually BLG absolutely destroy uh, a fight in the top lane, and they're able to just kind of run it down. Gwen runs into the fountain and ends up getting a double kill anyways, and they're able to close the game out. So, impressive stuff from BLG, but I do think that Cloud9 looked very competent in this game, especially Blabber looked really good. But for BLG, it's kind of hard to give out a player of the game, mostly because everyone played well. Like, there wasn't, like... 
you know, we can look at Cloud9 and be like, Blabber facilitated everything. BLG just had a lot of avenues winning, and they played really well as a unit and as a team. A lot of their team fight success was coming from just playing their champions correctly, and so, you know, a lot of credit to BLG. I, if I could give player of the game to everyone, like, this is a team player of the game kind of performance. It just was a really good game from the BLG team. I'm gonna give it to Bin in the top lane. I thought he was the most obviously outstanding player, obviously grabbing that first blood, but Gwen in those team fights was just a little bit of a menace. There really was no clean answer to her, and especially because of the way the draft ended up working with you picking Scion on R2, only to pick LeBlanc Blanc on R3 when you already saw the RE basically just giving Bin counterpick for no reason. Um, was, it was certainly a choice, uh, but Bin took advantage of it, and he was able to make his mark on this game. I think he was the most actively impactful, but Elk had a good game. On had a phenomenal game, and he was fantastic this series on the Alistair. June and Yigal were good. Bin's gonna get my player of the series as a whole, but again, realistically, you could give this to On as well. I think Bin and On were definitely the two standout members from BLG, in my opinion, and both of them were definitely making a lot of plays in this series and in this game, but for BLG, you're now moving on to that second round. You're gonna play the winner of tomorrow's game of JDG and Golden Guardians. Certainly, you're expecting one team over the other, but congratulations to BLG. We all thought you were going to struggle a lot more than this against a team like Cloud9, but for C9, some positives, some negatives. You were close in every single game. Yes, it was a sweep, but there's some takeaways that I think you can be relatively happy about. Blabber played phenomenal in Game 3, and I thought Berserker was really good in Games 1 and 2. Those are the two players that you're kind of hoping to step up. That's why I still don't think, you know, I don't agree with a lot of the other analysts, you know, a lot of the other co-streamers, you know, not not trying to flame anybody, but I, I personally don't agree with Dom and with Yamato and, you know, all these code streamers that are saying, oh, C9's maybe the worst team in bracket stage. I just don't agree with that. There were more positives to me in this series than you could have taken away from Mad versus T1. There were more positives than, in my opinion, G2 versus uh, Gen G, which is controversial because G2 won a game, but I think Cloud9 was super close in all three of these. I think they're obviously trade-offs. C9 may be playing the worst of those teams, and so you, it really is personal preference. You can kind of move it in any kind of way, but I kind of liked how C9 played in a couple of these games. They just weren't able to get it done. I still think they're going to be a team that can be reckoned with, and moving down to the loser's bracket isn't exactly the worst thing in the world. The problems they do need to fix are apparent, though. Top lane was a problem. Fudge gets done of the game here. He just was not good this series, and it's a trend for him. I hate to say it, but... And, you, and anybody who follows the channel knows, I'm not someone who likes to over-inflate the importance of one, two, three games or a week's worth of games, right? Like Worlds or like MSI, like it's one week on one patch. We see a lot of these players over the course of the year on multiple patches in multiple environments, and that's usually a better indicator of the, the strengths and the weaknesses that each player is able to co-op, but... Fudge has just been a player who has consistently performed below expectation at basically every international event that he's gone to. It's a reputation that I think Blabber has gotten very unfairly. I, I do think Fudge is getting in the area where I'm starting to get a little concerned. Hopefully, he can kind of turn that around against Golden Guardians. Or, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say against GG. Maybe they win. Who knows, right? But against whoever they play in loser's bracket. But this was not a good series. Zven was also very not good in this series. Was definitely a little bit of a problem on the Rakan. He had a much better game on the Thresh. If only because he was just a little bit more passive playing for Berserker. And I think that's going to be the style that definitely C9 likes to play more. The Engagers, the Onus being on Zven has never really been the idea that C9 has wanted to go to. And in this series, you could kind of see why. But Eminus was a non-factor. He just was kind of a secondary player in the mid lane that really wasn't getting a lot done. Blabber and Berserker had their moments, but it certainly wasn't enough to carry them across. I still think C9 can win games. I'm just not sure how, you know, efficient it's going to be. But for BLG, congratulations to them. They're moving on to round number two. And, you know, with their performance that they showed here, this is a team that very well could go a lot further in this tournament than I think a lot of people anticipated. All right, but that is going to do it for my MSI Day 3 overview and analysis. You know, C9 BLG it certainly was an interesting series, but BLG definitely coming out on top as the better team. Tomorrow, we've now got JD Gaming versus Golden Guardians. I think a lot of people are expecting this to go uh, one way and, and, and for it to be pretty one-sided, and I'm certainly not going to go against the grain, but... Hopefully we get to see at least some interesting games. That's the hope and the goal. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you think of this series? What do you think of tomorrow's series? And what did you think of the video? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and feedback. Of course, if you did enjoy the video, hit that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. It lets me know you guys are enjoying the content. Also, of course, it helps get this video out to a lot more people, which is always appreciative. And then if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We're posting daily coverage on MSI. We're going to be covering every single game that's played at the tournament. We've already done it for play-ins. We're going to be doing it for bracket 
bracket stage as well. Again, you can check out the playlist up in the iCard right now to see every single MSI video, but hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified when those videos do go live. But of course, with all that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day, and I will see you all later.